All right, welcome to our first homebrew video. Today we're going to be making a dry Irish stout. All right, so the first step in making this is we need to steep our specialty grains. Um, the dry Irish stout in this kit uses an English roasted barley. So we'll take this mesh bag here. I usually just kind of wrap it over the top of the plastic bag. Now this is going to make a mess. You might want to do this over a sink. Alright, so we'll just throw that away. There's a lot of sediment that'll come out of the back, so that's why you really want to have this over a sink or a box or even a trash can. Maybe shake it up a little bit because you don't want to. And we'll just try to get this tied up. And we'll bring it over here to our water, which we will be heating up. I like to just tie it on to the handle of the kettle so it doesn't fall in completely. And we'll just let this set for 20 minutes or until the water gets up to about 170 degrees. And then we'll be right back. All right, so we're just about up to temp here. Let me check. Uh, 170 degrees. So I'm going to pull these grains out here. Good idea to let these kind of drain off for you. Move to the trash can. You don't want to squeeze these though. So let them drain off. Part, we'll be able to bring this up to boil and then we'll add the uh, malt syrup. Uh, so we'll let it start to boil. I guess we can talk about some other things. Uh, your liquid malt extract. It's going to be thick, it's going to be syrupy. It's going to be kind of hard to get out of the bottle. Um, so what I do is I let it sit in hot water and that'll make it a little runnier and so you can pour it out a lot easier. Um, the other important thing that you need to do is enjoy a homebrew. Now, if it's your first homebrew, it's okay. You can drink some of that crappy other stuff you buy at the store. Um, this is a caribou slobber. It's like a, a moose gruel clone that I brewed about a month and a half ago. What are you drinking there, Corey? Well, today I'm drinking what's known as a cream ale. Not really sure which one this is trying to clone, but uh, it's pretty good. Nice, crisp, refreshing. Lower alcohol content, so you can session it quite nicely. Works yeah, out well. Hello. Once again, we will be doing the cream ale today. Oh, I should probably mention my name's Ryan, so I kind of forgot the introduction at the beginning. We'll get better at this. It's our first time. We're trying to iron out all the mistakes first. Um, you can see. You probably want to come take a look at this. It's a nice, kind of dark color. I mean, it's all that foam on top. Get us through the edges. What these greens did here. Really nice, beautiful dark color. Something you'd expect in this style.
see how far we are. I'm getting this up to boil here. We're about 185. We've got a little bit of time. Um, let's see. Uh, something that's very important when you're doing uh, brewing is you want to make sure all of your equipment is sanitized. I use a chemical known as star sand. Kind of a pricey chemical, but uh, it makes about one ounce of this with five gallons of water. And you'll get a nice looking mixture, a lot like this. And anything, I mean, you don't need to sanitize the kettle since it's going to be boiling water. But um, anything else that's going to touch your work, such as the bucket, or you know, the, maybe your spoon, your strainer, a lid to your fermenter, you want it all sanitized. You don't want any sort of weird bacteria getting in there because it'll make your beer taste weird or just flat out ruin it. Um, a lot of my friends do. We like to get bottles, spray bottles. This stuff's expensive. You don't want to make five gallons every time. I'm a wasteful person, so I have five gallons. But the nice thing about spray bottles, you just spray down everything that you want sanitized. You know, there may be things you don't even think about, like the scissors you use to cut open the yeast pack. You know, sanitize that. Do whatever you can to keep infection low. Low infection means good beer. Um, even the, I like to make sure the yeast pack itself is sanitized. Alright, let's, looks like we'll get a little more action in the kettle here. Quick peek. Eh, haven't even broken 200 yet. We're getting really close to it. But uh, once this gets boiling, we're going to take it off the burner. We'll mix in the liquid malt extract that we have here and two ounces of cluster hops. Now this is the first brew that I've done where I've had all my hops in right at the beginning of the boil. So this can prove to be interesting. Kind of important, but always read your instructions that come with the kit because it's not always going to be the same. It's going to have the same idea of how to do it, but not necessarily have the exact same timings for uh, when you start adding hops. I've had brews that have had liquid malt extract, and then you add dry malt extract, and then you would add hops 15 minutes after. Add hops 15 minutes after, and then another 15 minutes, and then another 15 minutes. The kettle's getting pretty active right now. Uh, it's shaking a lot, so my spoon fell off there. A lot more foam in there. It should be boiling pretty soon. It's always uh, fun because there's a lot of standing in this. You don't really have a lot of time to sit down. Probably this once we get the extract in, it's going to boil for about an hour. So you don't want to leave the kettle untended, otherwise you will have boil over, and that is not fun. When we have the extract. I'll show you what happened the last time I boiled over, which was the only time I ever boiled over. The entire uh, burner is just covered in burns up extract and wort. Oh, well, looks like we're starting to boil.
think in an ideal situation, you wouldn't be using your uh, electric stove to do this inside your house. Uh, a lot of people use uh, propane fuel burners that they can use outside. I think that's a lot better way of doing it just because if you do boil over by accident, who cares if the concrete gets sticky? Try to clean up your kitchen is a different story. All right, we are boiling now, so I'm going to get this out of the way. And take the burn this off the burner. I'm going to turn down the heat on that. I don't necessarily want it to just totally go cool. Now, you don't want to just pour this in and then walk away or anything. You want to keep stirring it. And I always forget that there's this foil crap on the top. Which, of course, is nice and sticky. I did put the heat back up on high here, but as soon as it starts to get going, I'm going to have to turn it back down because otherwise it will boil over. Um, if you ever run into a situation where you think it's going to boil over, the best thing you can do is pull the kettle up off the burner. Get it away from the heat, let it calm down a little bit, and then get that heat turned back down somewhat. Go ahead and put it back in the burn and stir. If it keeps trying to boil over more, you just need to turn down the heat more until it finally kind of settles down and it's just boiling. I found that after adding hops, it usually will calm down too. But the main reason that it wants to boil over is there's just too much heat. There's a lot of sugar in there. A lot of action going on. I have to mess in a second. Always balancing acts here, trying to get the right temperature. Still going up. Yep. Like I said, just pull off the heat, and it'll calm right down again. Which would be the problem is I'm using an electric stove too, so those burners are holding on to that heat. I think 
we're going to be all right now. I'm going to get these added in. Be sure to let me know if that thing goes crazy again. I'm not paying attention. A watch pot never boils, but an unwatch pot always boils over. Someone's been watching the Northern Brewer farm on our videos. I might have watched a few in the last couple days. Whoa. First video and I swear. Well, now that we have that out of the way. Yep. Somebody had to do it. I don't know why that's not getting... After the last brew that I did, I thought I had this figured out. What the right temperature is going to be for this. Maybe I need to go down even further. And I lost some hops on the floor. That's awesome. Oh. Let's get these added in here. That one just went crazy all of a sudden right there. I thought it was going to calm down a little bit, but it just... Quick stir here. Alright, I think we have the temperature we need to have things set to. I'm going to set this for an hour. We should be good to go. Um, this recipe doesn't call for any other additions to it. So we'll come back once it's boiled for an hour. We'll get it into an ice bath and show you how to get into the fermenter. Yep. Well, we are 10 minutes in and it looks like it's boiling pretty good. Beautiful color. You can see the hops kind of floating there at the top on the edges. Or the residue from the hops, I guess I should say. Um, well, we'll see what things look like in uh, 50 minutes. All right, the wort has been boiling here for an hour. We're gonna get it moved off the heat. And we're gonna put it into an ice bath. So I'm gonna put some water in the sink. Get 
two gallons of cold water in there. Like I said, if you can afford a work chiller, best way to do it. Kind of 
about why I'm buying ice. Documented them, so it's all good. Yeah, we have proof that I'm All right. More slowly. And 
That'll happen. Okay, I'm going to take this towel here. All that is get a little oxygen in the mixture. That'll be good for the yeast. Don't worry, the towel has been sanitized. Try to rip this off. this are sealed. Good idea to wipe it up. There's a lot of sugar and stuff and it's all messy. You're gonna have to you may have bugs or something trying to climb all over it. And then the next part is now see I kinda did this wrong. Normally I would try to get this grommet to one side of the bucket where the handle is but I kinda screwed up and So that way I can pick up the bucket with the handle and the airlocks put in. Alright. Okay. Yeah, we're sanitized airlock. We'll just pop this guy in. This will let all the CO2 gas out without letting any bad stuff, bugs, oxygen, anything else, sneak back in. All right, let's get that little bit of liquid here. Um, I usually like to put a little bit of star sand in there, but I must have problems with that. Just because it'll bubble up and empty out there. I'll come in on this. There's a couple lines here on the airlock. I don't know how close you can get to that. Okay. You want to get things filled up too. Sit down close. Hopefully, I can get this in. You could use just plain water. Some people use vodka, which isn't a bad idea because, you know, it's sterile and if it manages to get sucked into the fermenter, then, you know, you don't need to worry too much. You're just adding food to it. There we go, perfect. Okay, once you get that on, just snap your lid on. Ah. 
That's all it takes. Let me see. This will take, this will have to sit in this bucket for one to two weeks. So in about two weeks, I'll move into a secondary carboy. And that's it for now. That's how, that's the first steps to brewing your own homebrew. Oh. Have a good one.